Welcome everyone. I hope you all are doing well. In this video series, we are going to learn about one of the most important topics in JavaScript, the DOM. Throughout the series, we will explore what the DOM really is, how it works, and the different features it provides us. Along the way, we'll also build a beginner-friendly project together, an expense tracker. This project will give you hands-on experience and help you strengthen your understanding of both JavaScript and the DOM. At the end of the video, I will also share some simple project ideas that you can practice on your own, which will make your learning even stronger. If you ever get stuck or feel confused while practicing, just leave a comment or make a public post on social media and mention the Logic Based Labs page. We will do our best to understand your issue and guide you towards the solution. I am confident this will be an exciting journey for you. But before we dive in, remember that you should already have a good grasp of JavaScript along with some basic knowledge of HTML and CSS. If you feel confident about these basics, then without any further delay, let's begin our journey into learning the DOM. So, the very first question is, what is the DOM? The DOM is one of the most important concepts in JavaScript. JavaScript is what makes a web page interactive. But how does it do that? Through the DOM. By manipulating the DOM, we can control the content, the structure, and even the styling of a page. To really understand the DOM, we need to break it down into its three parts, D, O, and M. First, think about this. When we look at a web page, its main structure comes from HTML, right? For example, what you are seeing right now is loaded from a file called index.html. The HTML code we wrote is exactly what's inside that file. In the same way, in our file system, an image like a JPG or PNG or a Microsoft Word or PowerPoint file, these all exist as separate files. We often call them documents too, like a Microsoft Word document file or an image document file. The index.html file on our computer is also just another document in our file system. And this idea of a document in HTML is where the D in document comes from. That's why we call the HTML page itself a document. And the D in DOM represents exactly that. Now comes the O, which stands for object. Let's take the index.html file I showed earlier. Inside that file, we write HTML code like this. That HTML code is made up of different HTML elements. So what do we call elements? For example, head, body, div, h1, p, all of these are HTML elements. But remember, they are not just plain text. Even though we write them as text, in reality, each of them exists as an object. In other words, every element is represented as an object. Because whenever JavaScript manipulates something or works with it, at the end of the day, it sees everything as an object. JavaScript doesn't recognize anything outside of objects. For example, if I have used a div in the code and I want JavaScript to understand that div and later perform some operations on it, JavaScript has to treat that div not as text but as an object. And that's how we get full control over things. And that's why even though we see the code written as plain text, behind the scene, JavaScript converts them into HTML elements. All these HTML elements are actually objects. And that's why the O in DOM comes from object. So now we have reached DO. Let's move on to M. The HTML code we just looked at can easily be imagined as a T structure. You see, in the browser, everything exists as an object and those objects take the form of a tree. There's a parent node at the top. Beneath it are various properties and those properties can also have their own sub properties. So you always have to start from somewhere and that starting point is the window object, the global context. In the case of a browser, this is what we call the window context or the global object. So after the window object comes the document and then our HTML, which we write using HTML tags. After that comes the head and then the body, right? Inside the head, we have the title along with many other types of meta information. So based on the example we just saw, we can imagine the T structure like this. This HTML tree structure that we are visualizing is what we call the tree model, the model of the HTML tree structure. And it's from this word model that the M in DOM comes. Got it? So these three together form the whole idea. Document, that's our index.html or any HTML file. And that's where the D in DOM comes from. Each HTML element is treated as an object so that scripts can work with them and perform operations as needed. That's why every element is converted into a JavaScript object and that's where the O comes from. 
Finally, the entire HTML element is represented as a T structure, which we call a model. And that's where the aim comes from. Put it all together and you get the document object model or DOM. At first, the name might sound complicated, but in reality, it's actually very simple, isn't it? I hope you have got the idea so far. When we build a REST API, there are usually four main operations. Create, read, update, and delete. Together, these are called CRUD. These CRUD operations are very common. Almost every web application is basically built around these four actions. To put it simply, create means adding something new. Read means retrieving the data of an element or object. Update means modifying existing data and delete means removing it. The names explain themselves, don't they? What happens is JavaScript reads the HTML we have written and creates a tree model inside the browser. That's called the DOM tree. Each element exists as an object and we can perform CRUD operations on these objects. Makes sense, right? We know that the C in CRUD stands for create. Inside the DOM, we can create a new element. For example, we could make a P tag element and put the text hello inside it. That's what we call a create operation. And we can also perform read, the R in CRUD. For example, we can read the text inside an H1 element if we want. Then comes U, which stands for update. Let's say the value of a P element was document object model. We can update it to just Tom. We can even change the type of an element. For instance, update a P element and turn it into a span. You get the idea, right? We can also delete an element entirely if we want. For example, the H1 tag I just removed, that shows we have full control, right? If we had to write the entire HTML only with JavaScript objects, then we would need to manually create every single part of the HTML code ourselves. Instead of that hassle, HTML works as a shortcut markup language. By writing it, we tell the browser what structure we want. In the end, the browser converts each element into the DOM, turning everything into JavaScript objects so developers can grab these elements later and perform operations on them. In short, that's the essence of the DOM. It's the model on which we carry out different operations. From here on, we will go step by step and see how these operations are done. In other words, DOM manipulation or working with the DOM.